We are now in a room called Baroque Angels. Look around. These projected images are of mythical creatures of Brazilian football. When they step on the field, it's like they're creating a work of art. And well, as we all know, there is no such thing as an angel being a man or a woman. They are simply angels. Here, the light, the sound, the projections combine, producing an almost sacred environment and honoring 29 athletes. Four of them are women, Marta, Cristiane, Formiga, and Sissi. In truth, it actually took a good while until the first women were introduced to our temple. In 2015, Marta and Formiga received holograms in our room. We'll get to talk more about them later on. In 2019, it was Cristiani and Sissi's turn to get proper homage around here. Do you know who they are? Cisleide do Amor, known as Sissi, was born in 1967 in Esplanada, a small town inside the state of Bahia. At those times, women were banned from playing football professionally. People in her family weren't exactly supportive, but Sissi's desire was so great that she would rip off her doll's heads to make balls out of them. The midfielder became known as the Football Empress. Sissi was part of the first women's national team in Brazilian history in 1988. She was one of the legends to sport the traditional jersey number 10 in our football history. Quick, skillful and left-footed, she had an impressive free kick. Sissi featured as a spotlight in the national women's team at the 96 Olympic Games in Atlanta when Brazil came in fourth. She was also one of the top scorers at the United States World Cup in 1999. Nowadays, she works as a coach. When I started, football was not allowed at that time. There was a law, right? So basically, my childhood was me playing with the boys. And the first time I had an opportunity to play was with my brother and my dad. Well, my dad not so much, but my mom thought I shouldn't even think about playing because, you know, Football was for men. Now to Cristiane Rosera, known as Cris. Her name, for us, is synonymous with goal. She is from Osasco, a city in São Paulo's vicinities, and until 2020, she was the greatest scorer of the Olympic Games amongst men and women. The striker was born in 1985, only two years after women's football had been regulated. Actually, I started when I was seven, but when I was six or maybe five, they would tell me that like um, I was already chasing after the ball, already playing with the ball. I would follow my brother who trained at a football academy, my older brother. Then we would end up playing outside the field with the dirt and I would get in the field instead, you know, to play football. Chris is left-footed, a killer with a sixth sense who knows just how to sniff out a goal. She has an insane ability to finish a play. She was a silver medalist at the Beijing Olympics in 2008. She has played all around the world, but it was as part of the Santos Football Club that she actually stood out. She was part of the most successful generation of Santos team's well-reputed female league and won the Copa Libertadores twice. We all know that having idols and role models is key to inspiring new generations. Can you imagine how many athletes we may have lost along the way because of prohibition and prejudice? Because of opportunities that were not given? So let's celebrate our stars. Their victories are also ours. Now, for us to be able to understand the trajectories of these athletes, there is a fundamental factor. The sports media. And there are a lot of women in this story too. I'll tell you more about that in our next episode.